I think we're ready. Let's head back to the CIC. And at this stage, all that's left, Priority Earth. Where it all started in Mass Effect 3, mind you, the tutorial for Mass Effect 3 took place on Earth, and as some of our squad's mates were saying there, it all comes back full circle. The Citadel is now in orbit over Earth, in the heart of Reaper-controlled space. A final assault on Earth is the only way to deliver the Crucible to the Citadel and defeat the Reapers. Launch the assault on Earth when ready. So, let's save here. And let's hop into the galaxy map. Here is Chrono Station, of course, was Cerberus Headquarters, but been there, destroyed that. Let's head on back. We actually didn't get our fuel restocked there, but I think we should still be fine, especially because if we run out, we're going to get automatically teleported here anyway. And let's head out. And at this point, the Reapers are absolutely everywhere. So much so that we cannot even go anywhere at all other than the local cluster to order the fleets to Earth. One notable exception or difference between this mission and any other mission in the game is that most of the time, when you fly into a new cluster, you end up in one of the systems there and you have the chance to fly around and explore and maybe you do a mission directly in that area or maybe you scan around, maybe you go and drive over to a neighboring system. Not the case here in this instance. Once you fly over to the local cluster, I believe you will immediately get thrown into this mission. So. Don't get caught off guard. Only make this fly in once you're ready. Again, remember that you can upgrade weapons, you can purchase more things from the shop downstairs on the bottom floor uh, of the Normandy, even if you can't make it to the Citadel itself. So that and obviously talking to squad mates and setting up your armor or anything else, any final preparations you would like to make before taking on this last mission, make sure you do it before you make the trip. With that being said, having done all those things, we're good to go. Let's get started. Commander, you've got a priority message from Admiral Hackett requesting to come aboard. Permission granted. Aye, Commander. Commander? Admiral? Are you ready to bring the might of the galaxy to bear on the Reapers? Yes, sir. Then let's make sure the fleets are ready. All fleets reporting in, sir. Never before have so many come together from all quarters of the galaxy. But never before have we faced an enemy such as this. The Reapers will show us no mercy. We must give them no quarter. They will terrorize our populations. We must stand fast in the face of that terror. They will advance until our last city falls. But we will not fall. We will prevail. Each of us will be defined by our actions in the coming battle. Stand fast. Stand strong. Stand together. Pack it out. Shepard, the sword fleets are ready to strike at the Reapers surrounding Earth. While they keep the enemy engaged, you and Hammer Ground Forces can take London. London? Why aren't we hitting the Citadel directly? 
Anderson can brief you on that. Admiral, how are you holding up? We are ready to end this. But as you can see, the station's closed itself since it appeared over London. Damn it. Gotta get the arms open to Dr. Crucible. Exactly. But London is surrounded by Hades cannons. Hammer transports can't land while they're active. You lead a squadron of smaller shuttles. Infiltrate with a ground team to take out the cannons using heavy weapons. Hammer can land, and we'll set up a forward operation space. I still don't see how we're getting to the Citadel from London. The Reapers use this beam to transport humans, alive and dead, to the Citadel. From the FOB, Hammer will launch an all-out assault on the Citadel beam. Everyone who makes it that far will take the beam to the Citadel, then locate and activate the Citadel arm controls. Once we see those arms, Shield Fleet will escort the Crucible to the Citadel. But timing will be critical. We don't have enough firepower to keep the Crucible safe for long. Okay, so that was a whole lot there, of course, and one of the one of the few times we've actually met Admiral Hackett in person. We I think saw him as well at the end of the Arrival DLC in Mass Effect Two. But if you didn't do that, this might even be the first time that you've actually seen him in the flesh, because in Mass Effect One it was always just uh, a video, or rather a, an audio call. In much of Mass Effect Two and Mass Effect Three, it was either that or uh, much like we're seeing with. Anderson right now, a hologram, but uh, of course, this is the final preparation for the attack, and so we've split up our troops into separate groups, some of which are going to be helping to uh, move the Crucible in towards the Citadel, some of which are going to be ground troops, Hammer, going in and trying to make that run for this beam that can hopefully take us up to and into the Citadel so we can actually open it up and allow us to connect the Citadel to the Crucible. And then I think we also have a, a portion of our troops, our, uh, our squadrons, our fleets, are just actively in space around Earth as we try to make our approach so that we can land in the first place. So this is what we train for. Nothing's ever easy. No reason it should start now. It's desperate. I don't even want to guess at our odds. But... But this is the only plan we have. If we wait, the Reapers bleed us slowly. Conventionally, we can't defeat the Reapers without the Crucible. Get the Citadel arms open. Commander, whatever the cost, we'll do the rest. Yes, sir. Good luck to all of us. All right, and with that, we are now selecting our squad for what will be the final mission of the game. So, that being said, we actually, minor spoiler, will have the chance to modify our squad if we'd like on one subsequent occasion. So this is not well, who we're going to, or not, doesn't need to be who we have for the entirety of the rest of the game. But of course, the stakes, are as high as they will ever get here. So for that reason, we are, we're looking to bring out the firepower for sure. And for this component, I think the things that we want to bear in mind is obviously we're expecting to run into Reapers, right? So Reapers tend to have lots of armor, some barriers, if especially they have some of those barrier generators, but at least the Banshees start with barriers and Marauders have shields, but they're the only shielded enemies of all the Reapers, so armor is the, the chief concern, and Reapers tend to be one of the better types of enemies to use crowd controlling biotics against, so obviously we can do that as an adept fairly effectively, but uh, it may be reason to bring another squad mate along with us who can also do that kind of thing. Obviously, we've uh, had some people who we have been relying on big time for not just Mass Effect 3, but in some cases, even Mass Effect 2 and getting all the way back to Mass Effect 1. And part of it just feels fitting if we are to say, make a bit of a point of bringing our tried and true original team here with us on the final mission. So I think for that reason, we'll bring Garrus. Obviously he has been a huge, huge factor for us, especially in Mass Effect 3. 
Then, in terms of people that we had dating back all the way to Mass Effect 1, that would include Tally, that would include Liara, and that would include Ashley. Now, Ashley and Garrus have fairly similar skill sets. They both have tons and tons of weapons damage, which can certainly be useful for mowing down as many Reapers as we can as quickly as we can. But crowd control in particular would be quite lacking if we were to use those two. Ashley may be, oh, as I accidentally cycle the appearance, but she may be a little bit better when it comes to the abilities or for crowd control relative to Garrus. With, she still has concussive shot as Garrus does as well, but Inferno Grenade, unlike Garrus, uh, I suppose Garrus does have a proxy mine. Um, so there's that, and then Marksman actually means she arguably has more weapons damage than even Garrus, but the Disruptor ammo is going to deal extra damage to shields, whereas Garrus's armor piercing ammo obviously deals extra damage to armor, and as we were saying before, the Reapers are primarily armor-based enemies, so for that reason, I think uh, that that is going to give Garrus a pretty significant advantage against the big bad bosses of the Reaper variety, so Garrus probably does make sense still as our, our primary gun in this engagement here. If we're looking for people who bring other skill sets to the table, we could use Tally, we could use Liara. We heard Garrus and Tally arguing as we were going down into the crew quarters between themselves about who was going to rack up more Reaper kills, and Garrus was saying how, eh, Tally, you know, you're great against the Geth, but not so great against Reapers, because you might not have stuff to sabotage. And uh, that that could very well be the case. She does still bring some crowd control to the equation, though, as she can use combat drone and energy drain, or rather a combat drone and defense drone, I should say, that have some stunning capabilities. And uh, energy drain, at least for uh, marauders, will be somewhat relevant. But outside of that, not going to have too many use cases for it. And uh, sabotage, yeah, that's uh, probably not going to be something that we're we would be using all that often, but I think it's the one that we invested the least in of all of her skills, so maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. Then Liara, for her, obviously, our other primary biotic. The warp ammo is quite solid against Reapers, extra damage to uh, barriers and armor as well, I believe, right? So that, those are the types of defenses that Reapers have, so that's good stuff. Singularity for crowd control, stasis for crowd control, warp, for more biotic combos, and not much in the way of survivability or weapons damage would be the two things that Liara is not doing the best of, but does she make up for it with her additional crowd control? Perhaps? Perhaps. So, uh, the other thing that is worth considering is this, this part of this mission we are going to be taking a lot of hits in all likelihood, so survivability is definitely a factor we should consider, and that is Liara's biggest weakness, really. I think she is our, our least tanky, our squishiest of all squad members, so it is a risk to bring her with us, but I think in the interest of staying true to our original teammates, I think we may go Garrus and Liara. This is, of course, the team that we've, this combination, we've used more than any other in Mass Effect 3. So I think we do go this route. I think we do go this route. And I'm actually curious. Power damage for Liara. This is what we've been using all along. Because if we have I think power recharge may even be maybe preferable. Might go for this then. I think we may prefer that. So let's do it. Then for weapon selections, take a look at the new weapons that we picked up here. There's the Indra. Oh, we purchased this from the Spectre Terminal a while back. We just didn't look at it. It's uh, a little bit lighter by at least sniper rifle standards. Uh, decent rate of fire, and so that is uh, unusual for snipers. I feel like we tried this. Did we not try that in the, the uh, shooting range? I feel like we did that at one point. Uh, but in terms of pure damage per shot, it's not quite as high as some other snipers. Then on the assault rifle side of things, we of course recently acquired the Falcon. And so this Alliance rifle launches 
25 millimeter mini grenades, as I was saying, the explosive rounds. Lighter and more accurate than most grenade launchers, the Falcon burns through specialized ammunition as well as standard thermal clips. A field fabrication kit generates this ammunition, leaving the clips as the rifle's only limitation. So the damage, I mean, it looks high there, but the thing is that it, it is very slow rate of fire, especially by assault rifle standards. So in terms of actual damage per second, it's okay. It's not amazing. But uh, the key thing is that because of the explosions, it has some built-in AOE and also built-in stagger, which can be a form of crowd control from the weapon slot, which is something that can be hard to come by. So it's, it's a nice tool to have in your toolbox if, for whatever reason, you think that uh, just not getting completely overwhelmed by a high number of enemies is more of an issue than dealing direct damage. But of course, this is for us, and we are an adept, and we care about our cooldown, so we want to keep our recharge speed quick, and therefore we'll stick to our, our usuals here. The question would be for Garrus. Do we have reason to deviate from the Typhoon, or do we feel like the additional crowd control for something like the Falcon might actually be preferable in this occasion? I am not sure that that's the case, though. I think we may still want to stick with the Typhoon, at least for now. Obviously, it's been amazing for us thus far. Then... For Liara. Hurricane... Scorpion Hurricane is definitely one of, if not the best, SMGs, so we're probably going to want to stick with that. Scorpion, that one you could potentially justify going in a different route. It's slow, but it does deal damage in decent chunks. It does have explosive rounds, so it does give us a little bit of stagger, a little bit of crowd control, but I find that it's... I personally at least don't love it for that purpose because there is a delay before the rounds actually detonate, and so oftentimes I find that when I need it most for the stagger and the crowd control, I, I'm just sitting around waiting for it to go off, and in the meantime, I'm getting killed. So, for that reason, I'm not actually the biggest fan of the Scorpion, but I'm not sure we have any alternatives here that we would prefer for Liara. Like, if we had someone with more weapons damage, then we could go with something like the Talon, or the Paladin, or the Eagle, and just try to basically say, all right, Liara, this is the best you can do in terms of pure weapons damage, but given now she does not have much in the way of pure weapons damage, maybe we do try to keep her as more of a, a support role, at least when it comes to what she's doing with her gun, and therefore the additional stagger might be the most useful thing she can do. So I think we stick with this. I think we stick with this. Then, oh, really? Has it really been that long since we used Liara? I'm kind of shocked. Wow, we still have a lot of points left here to spend for her. Okay, yeah, I'm surprised. I am surprised. Okay, so in that case, I suppose that means right, for the longest time, we were trying to get her up to the point where we could get the stasis bubble. So I think this is finally our opportunity to make that happen. <laughs> On the last mission, we'll finally get that ability that we were saying was perhaps her most important ability. So, uh, sure. It means more AoE on the stasis, capable of trapping two people simultaneously, so it's a... Uh, holds them steady, and it also works one of the only biotic abilities that were one of, not the only, but one of the only biotic abilities that works on shielded enemies, so even on marauders, which would normally be a little bit trickier for us to handle. Then we have seven points remaining, which means we do not have enough to fully upgrade either of these skills here, but it's either the passive for the increased force and duration of her abilities, or weapons damage. I think we'd probably go the biotics route, right? Or it's singularity for lift damage or recharge speed, and 4.29 seconds is decent. Takes off, what, like about half a second if we get the recharge speed here? But I think, whoo, as he presses that button too many times, I think that the force and duration may still be preferable because I'm thinking of, in particular, stasis, increasing the duration of this. Uh, the longer we can hold enemies with it, the better. Uh, 
for the most part, uh, oftentimes at least when we're bringing Garrus with us, if we say to somebody, Garrus probably has more than enough time to shoot them dead. But every once in a while, what we'll do is we'll deliberately say to somebody and just hold them there and use it as an opportunity to ignore an enemy, or in this case, now that we have bubble stasis, two enemies, and deal with a more pressing matter. And that just makes it so we're not nearly as overwhelmed when we get surrounded by enemies. So I do like the idea of making that a little bit stronger. The downside to that is that stasis technically does get destroyed when you start dealing a certain amount of damage to enemies and that amount of damage is actually not all that much. So uh, if we are shooting at the enemy that has been stasis, then increasing the duration of it is probably not going to matter because it's probably going to break before the duration expires anyway. But there is still a use case in which that it becomes helpful. So I think we probably do go for the force and duration. I mean, that also the force component is a factor for warp. Uh, is it though? It's not damage and duration, just force and duration. And warp does not have a built-in force value. I don't know if it technically still has a little bit of force. It's just not listed there. Huh. Kind of interesting. So yeah, I guess it really is the duration in that case. Warp does also have a duration for what it's worth, but... Hmm. I think we still take it, though. I think we still take it, though. And then obviously with our two points here, not enough to do anything else. So that means... We've spent all the points we can spend. Let's do it. Approaching Soul Relay, Commander. We're through the relay in 30 seconds. Fleet reporting. Turian fleet reporting. Asari fleet's reporting. Warrior fleet's accounted for and ready. Death fleet reporting. All fleets reporting in, Commander. Ready to engage on your command. Everybody's here. After all that time and effort to assemble the strongest force we can possibly assemble to take on the Reapers. Here they are. That is a lot of Reapers, though. This is it, everyone. Be ready on my signal. Fire!
breaking off. Preparing for descent. So that is one third of our forces. Basically engaging the Reapers, trying to distract them in some ways to give us the opportunity Shepherd. to get in and land on Earth. Good luck. You too, Joker. Stay safe. I'll be back before you know. So that was Sword. Was the group that we just saw right there. We're closing in on the All the ships commander. around Earth. Hammer is the ground forces. How's it look? Like hell? Take a look for yourself. I'm sorry, Shepard. I know how you must feel. I barely even recognize it. That doesn't look good either. Hold on. Damn it. Status. That was the squad responsible for taking out that defense turret. Who's on it now? Nobody in the vicinity. All either deployed or shot down. Drop us off. Sir? We have to take that thing out before Hammer can land. Understood. Change of plans, people. We're gonna take out that Hades cannon. How do we do that? That down shuttle would have been carrying heavy weapons. Perfect. You heard the man. Once we're clear, make your way to the crash shuttle. We'll search the wreckage for heavy weapons. Right behind you, Shepard. <laughs> All right, and we're getting thrown straight into the action here. And in fact, I think these cannibals and everyone else can still hit us even when we're in here. Now, go, go. So we need to be careful because they are right on top of us. But alas, we're here. We're home. It's Earth. Everything is uh, is not, it's not fine and dandy. But we still have. Ooh, a fight to win here. All right, let's just uh, let's just singularity Damn, these guys too. Get clear. Come get him. Once you've taken that turret out. There's our first time using the stasis bubble, so it does help as well for enemies that are trying to dodge. I suppose stasis doesn't really get dodged anyway, because it's instantaneous, but it does help us against shielded enemies as well, because we can detonate them too. Alright everyone, let's move. Okay. Rotter is the stasis. But now singularity and exploded. And uh, this Reaper is uh, certainly causing some issues, or at least trying to. There's a Marauder or a cannibal over there rather. Also trying to cause some trouble. So this a lot of enemies, in case you didn't see our mini-map there. There's a whole lot more where these guys came from. So this is where crowd control can certainly come in handy. Okay, just trying to thin things out because they are everywhere. And of course, if we're not careful very easily overwhelm us with just their numbers alone. Fortunately, we are quite good at dealing with the cannibals. The marauders make matters a little bit trickier with their shields, but these guys are just chilling here where we can hit them with the singularities and then follow up with the warp for the biotic explosions. And that does work well for us. 
in theory. Ah, uh, there's still plenty more where those came from, though. Um, Marauder, as we said, a little bit tougher, but the cannibal, if we can get you from here. Be great, and I think we did. Oh, we should also, if we have any lull in the action at all, try to make a point of activating ammo powers. Looks like Liara's is active on her own weapon, but she has squad ammo and is not active on ours, so we should still reactivate that to help us out when we get the chance, at least. Which is, uh, easier said than done right around now, but, uh, maybe we do it right around now, because there you see now we get the little purple going up on our acolyte, and we should try to get it active on all of our weapons here, for both Liara and for us, and then for Garrus, we're going to want to override the squad warp ammo with his personal armor piercing ammo, as that is going to be more effective for him. There's still someone over here, several people over here in back. But in theory, uh, the numbers are starting to dwindle a bit. There's a Marauder, another enemy over further to the left, but again, the Marauders, we kind of need to get rid of their shields first. Garrus, if you could, like, come up here and start shooting people and not do that through the ground, that would probably help us. Just, uh, theoretically speaking. Okay. Then, I mean, we can get rid of your shields. And then technically you're primed right now by both the Singularity and by the Stasis. I'm pretty sure you're dead. Not that you can really double prime someone like that, but Okay, there's still a fair number of enemies up here. Ooh, a fair number of enemies up here, which means we may not have wanted to have popped up like this as quickly as we did. But if you guys could focus on that Marauder, that would be kind of nice, because I'd love to Singularity him where it's not going to do anything right now. It's going to technically stagger him slightly. But there we go. Now he is Singularity to full, which means it, that it... Should have exploded him and made him go boom. More marauders. Certainly a lot of them. A whole lot of them. Where is Garrus right now? He's still way down there. Garrus, you know, we could really use a helping hand with your your weapon damage. That is kind of the main reason why you're here. I was hoping for a second there we might get a double marauder two for one combo. We are on the Acolyte. Is, uh, it's a little hard to aim, as you might imagine, when everything is shaking from this Reaper friend. Also, I did not charge it up long enough. And then as soon as I did, I just completely whiffed. Well done, lids. That, that did not hit you either. Wow, I am surprised. That one down. Go for this one. And we have, of course, our, our Garrus one-man firing squad, which definitely helps. Oh, you're moving in. We're working on it. We're working on it. There are kind of a lot of Reapers here. Brutes, you say? I see a Brute or two. You are not dead, somehow. Warp will probably kill you. I'm more concerned about that brute that is approaching from the distance. I mean, if it's a brute and only a brute, uh, Garrus might have killed it. Garrus may have already killed it. I think Garrus already killed it. Uh, Garrus has not already killed it. I lied. Guys, any anytime you want to start shooting at it would be great. And I might try to save our ammo as much as possible. I mean, there you see that the warp plus Garrus Typhoon is incredibly powerful with the warp debuff. There is a little bit of ammo. Oh, there is another brute here. Uh, so hopefully we can still get a decent supply of ammo here. As soon as we can actually targetable, we can lock in on you. Yeah, fortunately it's. These brutes, uh, if you could actually round this corner, it's not like they are, you know, any different from the brutes that we've encountered before. So, where's he coming through? 
from here. So, what worked before should work again. Uh, we somehow whiffed with that warp, even though we locked onto it, and roots can't really dodge by us, but alas, it is dead. Okay. So it looks like we've uh, come as close as one can get to establishing a bit of a, a safe zone over here right now. But uh, we cannot save, as, as you might imagine, being in the middle of the, the conflict still as we are. So, let's see. We need to get to the shuttle wreckage up there. And... Don't think that Reaper can actually zap us, but... Don't quote me on that. And we have more friends coming through here, it seems. And we may just need to outright make a rush up there. Alright, guys. Start pressing forward a little more aggressively. And focus on the crowd control here, I think. For the most part. So, supposedly, R can do the same. Really want to do that. Damn it, you got airborne hostiles inbound. Gonna try to keep them off you. Careful, Cortez. Ammo. Don't need it. it appears this is where we're looking to go. Team. Damn it, I'm hit. Cortez? I'm all right. You sure? But I won't be picking you up. I gotta land this bird quick. Get safe. Anything for you. All right, he's safe. But well, that was a close call. And we have more enemies popping up here. Hannibal. The cannibal on that flank as well. They are generally, as we were saying before, one of the types of enemies that we do better against, except when they throw grenades at us. So that is something that they like to do when we may be dead. I may have jinxed it. <laughs> may have jinxed it, right as I was saying that. Okay, so uh, squad mates. Squad mates. Getting up here and giving us some support fire would be very much appreciated. Especially because they are about to chuck more grenades at us. So, like, two cannibals. I don't know if they're close enough to get them both with a, a stasis bubble. But, in theory, are just a whole bunch of enemies right here. So, uh... Keep an eye out for their heavy weapon supplies. Okay, there's a cane over there. Which is a heavy weapon from Mass Effect 2. The name may sound familiar. That is the oftentimes somewhat jokingly referred to as the nuke gun or the, the nuke cannon. I mean, it, it has a, a nuclear symbol on it, even though it technically isn't actually firing nukes. But uh, crazy powerful, makes a huge explosion, actually capable of dealing friendly fire. So you need to be careful when you shoot it. But uh, it's over there. And so we probably would like to nab that. Right away! Although, of course, these cannibals not about to make life easy for us, and we... That. Do I hear a grenade? Not sure if I hear a grenade, which is a little concerning. Oh! What the heck? This dude's just chilling here? Um... Okay. Not really doing anything right now, so we might just leave him alone. Oh! Oh. So uh, I really thought that the the main area we were going for was over there where the Reaper is. But no, it looks like this is really the direction we were, we were trying to go to. And there's a Ravager back there, so that's pretty nasty. Um, I was mostly just thinking there was just going to be a cane in the corner, and that was really all, but... Last, oh, also, squad mates, please help us out here a bit. This Ravager. This Ravager must be dealt with. So, try to sneak in a warp here. 
something about the the big Reaper cannon going off just makes a little sound that is t concerningly similar to a grenade sound. That was that singularity that was supposed to be a throw. And so I'm not always a hundred percent sure as to whether there is a grenade that has been flying in our direction or not, and that is a that is a as a concern. Or door. Should have been primed there. I'm really surprised that it didn't take it Okay, the Ravager is kind of sort of flanking us. But we still have some cover even from this angle. And throw should finish you off now. There we are. Okay, Ravager's down. So that's certainly nice, but we do still have a lot of Marauders remaining here. So this one's shieldless and almost dead. So we can Singularity you. And make you go boom. This Marauder does have shields. And there's one here that also has shields as well. I mean, we can Stasis some of them, but... It's just a fraction of a second to... Ah, once again. Too quick on the Acolyte. Because obviously you're right next to that. That Singularity, which I was really hoping you are gonna... Yep, fall into like that. Okay. Then for you... A little more time to make sure we actually land the Acolyte shot, and I know it's hard to tell that we hit you, but we did hit you. Which means they're shieldless, which means we can Singularity, and make you go boom. And now this one... Oh, there's theoretically there's something right on top of us. That's a little concerning. Is that a Swarmer, maybe? I'm pretty sure that's a Swarmer. It is a Swarmer. I'll tell you what we'll do. Swarmer's dead. Okay. The Marauder appears to be dead as well. Let's take a quick second here if we can. See if there is like that cane but hanging out over here. Do we go past it or is it further in the direction that we were just fighting some enemies? Good. So initially I thought that this was the correct direction. I was like, oh, we're trying to go that way. This is kind of the way that we are coming up and facing, but no. This is the actual correct direction and there is the cane. Any additional friends planning to stop by here? Or are we mostly all set? Actually, did need that ammo, somewhat surprisingly. Hey, Reaper friend, how are you? How's it going? Don't mind us. Let's see, there's a cane right there. And there's actually a cane here as well. There's two of them. There are two of them. So, again, oh, whoa, we can actually see. I mean, so what do we have the pleasure? We'll map it. We need to destroy the Hades Cannon, which is right there. And so we basically have two opportunities to do that. Boom. Timber. That's it. Last gun down. All hammer teams, prepare for landing. Okay. Anybody, come in. We need extraction. Then things get a little different here. A little, little bit of a twist. Just survive. Just survive. No big deal. There was an extra cane lying around, which is certainly nice, but uh. It's one thing when you're firing it off at a distant Reaper, and uh, there's no possibility of collateral damage. There's another thing when uh, you might be trying to, say, shoot at enemies that are going to be uh, spawning potentially right in front of you. So, uh, yeah, that's that could make matters a little more difficult. So, Shepard says we need to get some extraction going on here. We need to get out of here. But the thing is... We do have company. And you hear that scream, should sound familiar. Let's try to send our squad mates back over to us, because uh, Garrus is currently getting hit by... I'm afraid... This is Commander Shepard. Any Alliance personnel in the vicinity? A Banshee. He does have crazy damage, and is capable of potentially soloing Banshees, but, you know, we'd probably rather not have to rely on him to do that. We're waiting around for our shuttle to pick us up here. 
the Singularities will definitely help us out to just do some crowd control here. That, and our Stasises as well. And technically speaking, during this component here, I believe enemies will respawn indefinitely. And actually respawn basically immediately. And so you technically speaking would prefer to just go pure crowd control and not actually get kills. Because if you can disable an, an enemy without actually killing it, then that means one pure enemy that you're actively having to do something about. Uh, stasis on you does feel like that's a little overkill though. Especially when you're already dead. Okay, I mean, if you guys want to casually walk into the stasis, or rather the uh, singularity, I suppose we'll take it. We might need to move this a little bit. They are trying to chuck some grenades, but I think they directed those more so at our teammates rather than us. As that guy goes flying off in that direction, I'm pretty sure that guy's gonna be. I think that guy's gonna be dead, but uh, suppose it's a chance he's not. I think you're primed. And we can just throw you. We can just throw you. Okay. Conveniently. If the shuttle were to land right here, that would be lovely. Alas, though, it is not. Oh. <laughs> that was uh, closer than it should have been. Closer than it should have been. Also, that is a grenade. It is right on top of us. Okay, um, see, here's the thing, is this is going to hurt a lot. And the shuttle does have HP, which means if you delay for too long, then you will actually miss your opportunity to get into the shuttle. Which is, uh, which is, needless to say, not a good thing. We might be dead. We are. <laughs> uh... <laughs> we died inches away <laughs> from the shuttle naturally. I also, I totally thought the shuttle was going to spawn where we were hanging out. I did not think it was going to spawn on the other side of this area. Had I realized that, probably would have made more of a point of hanging out here, um, rather than the farthest possible spot from the shuttle. So we'll we'll resume. We'll resume. See exactly where it starts us off here. Ooh, okay. So it starts us off in this this area here. Okay, there is still the second cave, so that is nice. So this is where the extraction is going to take place. The problem is, it is also where the Banshee spawns. So the Banshee notably did not respawn. This is probably gonna kill Garrus. This did kill Garrus and Liara. Because, as I was saying, it does have some uh some collateral damage. But it got rid of the Banshee, and as I was saying, the Banshee did not appear to respawn. Any personnel in the vicinity? Which is nice. Because that means that we might have just permanently gotten rid of the Banshee. Which is obviously ideal. And this way, I the enemies may just continually respawn right in this area. It certainly seemed like that on our first go-through. Which means it's going to be tougher until the shuttle appears. But once the shuttle does appear, we have much less ground we need to cover. So, a bit of a, a high-risk, high-reward approach, which I suppose you can make the case. Well, that's not really the preferred strategy when things went awry last time, but I think more so than anything. The problem last time was just that, well, there were too many enemies in between us and the extraction, and we had too much ground to cover. So, I'm hoping that this time around we can just make a quick rush for the shuttle. And with very little space in between us and said shuttle shouldn't be too much of a problem and we appear to have just completely disabled this cannibal uh so garris that was not an invitation to shoot it that is in fact was meant to be an invitation to do exactly the opposite of what you just did okay so the shuttle takes a little bit to come in but then it should i assume still appear in this spot yes it is okay so this is where this is why we wanted to be here the enemies who are currently in this vicinity are all singularity. 
making this exponentially easier. Get us out of here, Corporal. You okay? I'm alive. That you are, Commander. Shepard. Anderson. And Anderson. I Together. You wouldn't let me down. It's good to see you. And you are sight for sore eyes. How are we looking? It's been too now long. The heavy air defenses are dealt with. Hammer can land. And not a moment too soon. What's left of the resistance is holding a forward operating base. But the Reapers are countering already. Once we regroup, it's going to be up to Hammer to take up the fight. I mean, how did you manage to hold out for so long? Clearly, this place is completely overrun by Reapers. It must have been brutal here. Cut off from the rest of the Alliance. It's been touch and go from day one. But once we figured out the Reapers were focusing on the major centers, it became easier to avoid direct contact. Until London. Yeah. We held back as long as we could, sending in recon teams. Lost a lot of good men planning this attack. But with soldiers like Major Coates, and knowing you'd bring us help, we held on. Coates positioned there where he's just casually leaning against the side. Arms crossed right in front of him. This looks a, a little too smug. A little too smug for the circumstance, it feels like, but... You did more than hold on. We... Abandoned is a strong word, but we had to leave Anderson right at the beginning of Mass Effect 3 when Earth was one of, technically not the first, but basically the second target of the Reapers. And so, uh... Things at the very beginning were already looking pretty terrible. And somehow, through the entirety of our Mass Effect 3 playthrough, as we were going to all the other home worlds and every place in between, Anderson found a way to hold on here after non-stop Reaper attacks. Without you and your resistance, we'd be dead in the water. Yeah, the Admiral's being modest. He's the reason any of us are still alive. Let's not start handing out medals just yet. This fight's just getting started. And Hammer better be ready for it. All right. Well, everyone's ready. Everyone is prepared. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. They didn't start out together, but they're ready to stand side by side and win this war. Good. That's what it's going to take. We'll get it done, Anderson. I was born in London. Really? The entire galaxy united. Too bad it took the Reapers to bring us together. Shepard's the one that brought them together. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> I know you didn't like leaving Shepard. But nobody could have accomplished what you've done. It's good to be back home. There's the FOB. Looks good. Give Hammer the all clear. <laughs> 